Spirit, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we come to the parish church in expectation of several things. First and foremost, today is one of those preparatory Sundays for the Great Lent, and we have moved along quite a bit in our preparation. No doubt, most people have come to church for that. Also, we have our annual meeting today. We have a lot of things to say, a lot of reports to give, and perhaps some people came to church for that. Also, we have our annual Blini dinner. I'm sure nobody came to church just for that. But, just in case you did, we hope that the sermon will be edifying in any case. We served the Malayan to St. Vladimir just a few moments ago, as we always do. But we read a different prayer. That prayer is called the prayer for the quelling of man's passions. The Patriarch himself has asked us to pray for peace in Ukraine. And we, in fact, in the Church Abroad have been praying for some weeks uh, in this regard in any case. But we read that prayer especially for several reasons. Mostly because if we don't take the time to pause to let God work in such situations, then God is not when God is not invited, the outcomes tend to not be ideal. Man believes greatly in his own wisdom and often forgets God. There are those, I'm sure, in the parish who think what has happened in, in Kiev is a wonderful thing. I'm sure there are those in the parish who think that what has happened is a terrible thing. I'm not going to tell you what I think. I don't think that it really matters. Furthermore, I'm going to ask that we not have political conversations about this in the parish. Why? In case you forgot, Great Lent is coming. This is sort of a little bonus temptation that we get before Great Lent even comes in order to tear ourselves apart. Somehow, when the problems happened in Georgia some years ago, the Russian and Georgian people have managed to stay very close, even if the governments can't cooperate. I think this is an excellent example of what we should strive for also. We have people from Ukraine in our parish, we have people from Russia in our parish. Uh, I mean, it's kind of an artificial differentiation, I'm sorry. There are very few people who don't have some overlap uh, if you look far back enough in your own uh, genealogy. But in any case, the point is, what will be done by politicians will be done by politicians. Our job, brothers and sisters, is to pray that good decisions are made, that peace is held, that no one dies further, that destruction ends. This is our Christian duty. Our Christian duty is not to support one side or the other, to mock one side or the other. This is the devil's work. Sorry to say it so bluntly, but if we allow ourselves to be divided by what is happening there, how easily we will be divided when we want to fill the church. Come on. We need to seriously stop quarreling and seriously start praying. Now, I haven't heard any quarrels in the church, but I wanted to stop before it begins, because this is a great way for us to destroy ourselves. Or... We can come together as a parish family, we can pray for peace as our bishops are asking us to, and we can grow closer together, preserving the unity and diversity that we have here. Perhaps, appropriately, in any case, it must be providentially, because today is the day when the church commemorates the last judgment. Now, we started this preparation of Great Lent with the Zacchaeus Sunday, right? Then we went on to the publican and the Pharisee. Last week, we heard the parable of the prodigal son. All of these are meant to call us to repentance, to help us to prepare to enter into the Great Lent in a repentant way, in a, with a repentant nature. But now we have just really a week left. A week from tomorrow is Great Lent. And so the Holy Church as a loving mother, first begins inviting us, us, then urging us, and now being very sort of open and blunt with us about what will happen in our spiritual lives. Yesterday, when we, cel when we celebrated the commemoration of the departed, as is the practice in the church on that particular Saturday, we talked about one guarantee which I am able to make to all of you, and that guarantee is that you will leave this life. None of us will stay here forever. We live like we will, but we won't. This particular Sunday is appointed to help us to remember that. 
this particular Sunday is appointed to help us understand how we can be numbered with the sheep and not with the goats. One of the best sayings, and which really permeates the English language. We hear that particular uh, little saying said all the time. The sheep on the right side, the goats on the left. How will we be numbered? It's a secret probably. Maybe we don't know. Maybe no one knows. Or, if we just read the next verse in the gospel that was read today, it is said for us. Did you feed those who were hungry? Did you give drink to those who were thirsty? Did you give clothes to those who were naked? Did you visit those people who were in prison or who were in the hospital? Pretty straightforward, actually. The Lord is not asking us to do you know, higher mathematics here. This is what you do if you want to be numbered with a sheep. We like to kind of overthink it. And say, well, you know, that's kind of hard. Can't be going around with older people. That's, that's, that's kind of below my status. And in any case, I don't have time for such things. And we, we begin to build all kinds of self-justifications for ourselves. We are good at self-justification, actually. We may not be good at other things, but that is something we are very good at. We can find excellent excuses for ourselves for just about anything, quite frankly. But the Lord is very clear today. He didn't say, well, if you have time and you can fit it into your schedule and you don't have anything else going on, maybe you could swing by the hospital and see somebody who's there. Or perhaps you could give some clothes to someone who is naked. Or if you see somebody hungry and you don't have some place to go real quick, maybe you could give them a little food. You have to read the gospel with a rather loose interpretation to see those words there. It's very clear. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give drink to the thirsty. And we realize that not everybody can do that every single day. But you know, brothers and sisters, the Lord is generously telling us what we need to do for our salvation. Who are we to kind of say, that doesn't really fit into my schedule. I'll do this other thing. Okay, that's not a conversation I want to have with the Lord on the last day. If you do, Go ahead. But maybe we should concentrate on how we can do these things. And in fact, our parish gives opportunities for people to do these things. We go to Alpha House. We prepare kits for homeless people that can be given to them and for people who have been in some kind of tragedy and for young mothers who don't have enough money to buy diapers for their children and so on and so on and so on. All these opportunities the parish gives to us. Let's realize that we don't do that just because we don't have anything else to do or we think that you're kind of bored. That's not why. We do it so that you have an opportunity to fulfill the gospel principle that the Lord is calling us to today. So brothers and sisters, let's reflect on this gospel. We don't do a lot of fire and brimstone in the, in the Orthodox Church, and that seems very appropriate, given that this is the tradition of the Church. Nonetheless, every now and then, the Church calls us to some clarity. And today's gospel is meant to give us clarity. Let's take it for what it is. Let's decide that we are going to take action, that we are going to participate in these opportunities to help others, and if the Lord sends us someone, that we will help them as well. If we do that, brothers and sisters, we can hope to hear those beautiful words from our Lord that are alluded to in the gospel. On that last day, we will be numbered among those on his right hand not on, uh, among those on his left. And what, brothers and sisters, could we want more?